Hey there, what's going on guys? My name is Divine Darkness and welcome to a review of an awesome game called 8-Bit Boy. This game you can get from Steam for about $2.99 and it's a really awesome game. So with that, I'm going to start the review by reading the text that's about to come up now. Life was not what he had expected. He wasn't disappointed with life per se, but he certainly was disappointed in himself. When was the last time he was truly happy? When was the last time he woke up in the morning and thought to himself, this is going to be a good day? Finally, passing his exams one year ago, just to be faced with unemployment didn't help either. This was not what he had expected at all. At the age of 32, he felt that he had accomplished very little. Half-finished education course and the odd jobs in between weren't something to be proud of, he thought. It certainly wasn't how he had imagined his life would be when he was a kid 20 years ago. It all seemed so long ago, like in another lifetime. <coughs> he tried to remember how life was back then, back when he used to play games all day long on his trusted console. He got it for his 10th birthday, and oh, what a joy it was. He simply loved that thing and dreamed about growing up and making games himself one day. It all seems so silly now, knowing you have to grow up and take responsibility. He wondered if he still had it in the basement. Would it even work after all these years? He felt an urge to look in the basement. He went down to the dark basement. The air was cold, thick and moist. It made him a bit nauseous and lightheaded. He looked through what seemed like an endless number of moving boxes, crates and bags. But finally he found what he was looking for, in the far and darkest corner of the room. The old 8-bit console. And so many good memories just thinking about filled him bittersweet nostalgia. He looked through some of the old games, most of them were a little fuzzy around the label, and some even had mould on them. Suddenly he was struck with fear, looking at the last game cartridge in the pile. <clears throat> it seemed completely new and shiny. It even had that harsh chemical smell that, to it that new plastic usually has. No dents or scratches like all the other games, but what filled him with fear was the empty label on the top of the cartridge. It had print and pattern of the other cartridges, but it was missing the title, as if it was just waiting on someone to fill it in. He couldn't explain why this filled him with pure eeriness, it just did. Tiny and very subtle voice inside him whispered a chanting, Play it, play it, over and over again, like an echo from beyond. Like he had no say in this, he started ringing up the console to his old colour TV to try the uncanny cartridge. After getting up the console and on an old dusty office desk down in the basement, he plugged in the strange looking cartridge. The cartridge didn't need the usual push in to go all the way down into the slot. It felt more like it was being pulled right in, like two magnets just before touching each other. Just before flipping the wall switch, he hesitated just long enough to realise this was a very bad idea. A very bad idea indeed. Then he flipped the switch. So yeah, the game itself, the story behind it seems decent. It could do it with a bit more elaboration and the likes, but it's quite good. I'd like to say now that this, the gameplay itself is all pre-recorded uh, because I wouldn't be able to do a proper review without it being pre-recorded and just playing it. So yeah, from this point, it seems at this point, the, doesn't seem to be any confusion on the 8-bit face because it's... Oh, I just got pulled into a game. Let's go on through to the tutorial. So yeah, the tutorial is pretty basic. You see me moving back and forth. You can play this using the arrow keys on your keyboard or with a gamepad, which is quite decent for an 8-bit game. It makes sense. Pressing up to jump, left and right to move, and down to duck. It's pretty decent, I should say, trying to jump up over to there. The I believe there's four parts of the tutorial. And it has different as you can see there I got a power up which was a shield. More on that a bit in a bit. As it says here power ups jump up from beneath a tile marked with a plus sign and pick up what is at the moment a red berry where I can use power ups like that. 
That's um, red berry. There's also grapes and black grapes, or purple grapes, however you normally view them. Each just enhances the power up a bit more. Uh, pressing down and the attack button, which in this case, for me it was space, but that's judging it on the, uh, what's it called? What's it usually called? It's the B button on the game, yeah, the gamepad control. Uh, makes you use that ability. So the next part of the tutorial, the tutorial isn't comprehensive, probably because of how simple it is as a game. Being 8-bit, it's, it's quite the simplest thing you've probably ever seen. And this is typical with all 8-bit games, there's worlds in it. Starting from World 1, we see all this beginning. So what I think, and it most likely has been, is that it's been modelled off of Mario. The first one being the original 8-bit gamer is a standard blue colour. Next goes on to Mario's red, and the next one is Luigi's green. The next colour is black, which... Yeah, <laughs> that snake. Uh, the next one is black. I don't... I think that's just a, an extra thing they thought. Let's put in another colour. But, hey. So, we're going to move on a bit to the next world. The next world is, is more of an underground thing. Um, starting off here, as you saw there, I get a red coin. More on that later. Uh, the red coin, and I believe this part I sort of lost and died pretty soon. So, yeah. That's not very good and I lose my ability. So after I die, I'm just going to skip it through to uh, another part. Because I lose this bonus coin anyway. Uh, when you die, if you get a game over, because I'm in easy mode, which is, yeah, I know it's pretty sad for me to be in easy mode, but there's a good reason for it at this point. Because um, I'm in easy mode, it will restart me at the beginning of this level with all the power-ups that I've obtained as opposed to when I die at this point, like now, I restart with nothing. Just myself. And I get a shield now. I don't get that coin for a long time again. So, yeah, typically a bit fashion. You hit um, your head off of some, some uh, bricks and you're very likely to smack. You're very likely to get coins. If you don't get them then it's just going to break it. It's Again, it's just modeled off of Mario in your standard 8-bit platformer. Uh, yeah, there's not much else to it. Uh, as you saw there, once you reach 100 coins, differently to how you normally um, see it, where you just get an extra life. In this game, you get you have a randomizer of sorts that makes either you get an extra life or you get a shield, you get a power up. In this case I got a red um, berry which brings me to the starting to the start of my face. Um, there are about nine, eight or nine levels per world. So yeah, I've played, I've played the game before doing the review itself or before even doing the recording for the review just to get a taste of it and how to play it properly and get an idea. So we got through, I got through, played the boss, saw how it was. It's, as I said, it's about eight, nine levels and then the boss. So let's skip on through to the boss level. The boss level, at the beginning of it, you don't start you don't have control, it just walks you right through to where he is. In this case, it's a giant bird, chicken thing. Um, it doesn't matter whether I have a power-up or not, because I cannot use it on... You can't use the power-up on the boss. I died a couple times in this, because I, unlike, unlike most people, I don't learn from my mistakes. Um, and I do the same thing. It takes me a bit to realize, oh, 
maybe it's because of that. But yeah, all, the only way you can actually beat this boss, I haven't tried any of the other bosses yet because I'm just doing this for the moment. The only way you can beat this boss, you saw there, all I can do is jump on top of his head. I see you there, I thought it took me a bit longer to learn, but it doesn't. It didn't take me that long. I was scared I was going to get hit by that because while he's like that, you cannot actually kill him, you can't hit him. So we tried that and there we go, he's destroyed. Uh, the item you get next, I'm not I'm not sure what it is about. It's some multicolored feather of sorts. Um, still haven't figured out what it's for. It might be a way to get out of the game, but who knows. At this point I get another shield, which is useless to me right now. And we go on to the next world after getting the save coin. So, yeah. With that, there's not much else to it. On playability, I'd give it a 9 because it's a fun game to play. Enjoyable for those of us that are nostalgic. Um, design for an 8-bit, for a standard 8-bit, is really clean cut. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 because it could be a lot smoother. And as you can see at this point, I moved on to World 2 too, um, because I knew I was going to be talking through it. Uh, as you can see here, there's a little bit of lag on it, which could be easily fixed based on the um, design, because it is almost entirely the design issue that causes it. The, the it puts 8-bit gaming into a 64-bit or 32-bit disc, which can cause a lot of lag, so they could spruce it up a bit to say, <laughs> to put it easily and limit that issue. So yeah, other than that, there's not much else you can say about it. Overall, I've given it 9 out of 10 for playability, 8 out of 10, so that's a solid 8.5 out of 10 for the overall game, which I think is a very good um, thing, because I don't normally give good reviews to games like this. It's, I love these games so much that it's just really hard for me to get into it. And I've, as I said, I've played this quite a bit. I'm, on, I'm halfway through World 2 and I keep on dying as you can see. Get the game over. You see here that I move straight. I can click reload game and it takes me straight back to the beginning. Um, so yeah, other than that, there's not much else I can say about it. If you've enjoyed this and want to see me do more, just let me know uh, in the comments below what games you want to see me do and I'll try and get them done. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you all later. Bye!